That? No? Yeah? All right, we're working with distributed loads to figure out what the reactions are with that distributed load. So we'll do one of those as a warm up, and then we're going to take our next step with these, uh, these type of things. Not necessarily distributed loads, but uh, any kind of loads, because we'll be able to handle them all now. So uh, we'll, do, we'll do one of the homework problems together here, just because, uh, well, gosh darn, I'm in a good mood. So it'll be nice to get for once. So we've got a, a simple beam. Support, I, this is 115 in the book, by the way, but I'll just sketch it out. And uh, there's one meter there, and then another meter there, and then three meters down to there. And at the second one meter spot, our distributed load goes from uniform to a parabolic distribution. Maybe the type of thing you'd see if uh, wind was blowing something up against the side of the building. And we want to find out what the reactions are. So the rest of the details on that load. The constant part there, two kilonewtons per meter, remember that's meter of uh, uh, length of the beam, and then so that's also two, and then this maximum up there is four kilonewtons per meter. So by the time it gets to the right side of the beam there, it's uh, uh, the load's doubled, but it does so parabolically up to there. Okay, I think that's all the pieces. All right, so we want to find we want to find some some way to come up with those two reactions. Already solving in my head on the fly for the reaction AX. I already did that. You didn't even see it happen. It went by so fast. You're going to shake your head and say, man, this guy knows his stuff here. Jeepers, this guy. Is. Hope I hope I can get like that someday. All right. So you know that you know the deal. We want to replace this load with an equivalent single load or loads such that and, and place it such that the reactions are the same as they are for this one so that we're getting an accurate picture for in a simpler way. So, what do you suggest we do? I think there's two, two, uh, two different obvious ways to do it, but maybe, well, I guarantee Alan sees a third. Two seconds. Just two seconds. Alan never sees the obvious ones. He always looks for something else. Okay. You all right? <coughs> two separate problems. Left of the, the A side, and then the, do the Through what? Do the square, the rectangular side, the two kilonewton per meter side, and then do the over oh, here. Yep, and then do that side. Okay. Certainly possible. Do this as one section, and then that as another section. That's doable. The, the, we have to come up with the area of those either way. And 
I don't think it, one way is easier than the other for this way. The trouble with this one is, what do we also need to do? Once we've come up with the area, we need to know where the centroid of that area is so that we can place the force there. And that's doable, but let's check the book first, see what's, what's in that, uh, those tables at the back for, for parabolic distribu distribution. Oh, sorry. It's a sub-parabolic area. Yeah, it's got it's got the location of the centroid of just the subparabolic area, but not a a different type of distribution like this one. So it could be that they come out to the same place, but I don't know that that's obvious. So what else might be a better thing to do? It's not a triangle. <laughs> It's a subparabolic <laughs> area. <laughs> yeah, that might be a little more uh, doable because we know just where the centroid is of that area. We know just where it is of this area. That one will be right in the middle. This one will be over, I think it's three quarters of the way. So we just need to find out what the, what the magnitudes of those are. and then uh, the position for two point five meters for that one and then three quarters of two point five meters for the other one. Whatever that's equal to. The only other thing you need is the equation for that parabolic curve. Um, maybe we'll uh, we'll call it a little prime for the for the subparabolic part. Of it. Just the parabolic part, not uh, all the way down to the to the beam itself. that part. So you need to know what that A is. How do you find that? What we're looking for, the equivalent problem here is from 0 to 3 from 0 to 4, what gives us that curve? Because we only need a little area under that bit of curve because we've got the rest taken care of already elsewhere. So you need that, that curve. Student would 
say I have to leave him with some dignity. Why is, why is it negative? Why is what negative? The three, three quarters. No, it's not. That's the arrow. Oh, keepers. <laughs> integrate under there to get F2. Between what and what?
4.25, is that right? Because we're three quarters away across plus the three to the middle. should be more because there's more of the stuff over there. So that sounds possible. 5.3 and 6.2? 6.7. Anybody confirm that? 
Alan thought you had it done already. No, I didn't really. Yeah. I did, but I didn't have it right. I didn't do A and B. I just followed the center of the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing? Yeah. How come? This is it. I don't know. I, I can get A and B from there. It was, it was that or eat your cookies. So I decided to do that. You know, if you brought the cookies out, we want some. He just has Snickers in his hair. In his hair. That's a furious eater. <laughs> well, he, he knew we had to have it done by the time we got to class. But it doesn't smell like Snickers. It smells like cookies. <clears throat> you, know, you don't smell it? You're, no. Right. Maybe it's you. No, it's not. It's right. Let me see. Don't smell me. <laughs> I'm not smelling you. I'm just smelling you around. Yeah, that's what I did. Right. No. You know what? Maybe it's coming out of the vent here. Maybe this is connecting to the culinary arts building. So that, that, that the one graduate they have a year can have his own building. Not that we're bitter about that. We done? Are we going to declare BJ is the brightest guy in the class because he's the only one that can finish the problem? Yeah, that's what I got six too. 6.6 kilonewtons. Yeah, that's what I got A is 6.6? Yeah. B is 5.4. B is 5.4. Oh, that's not what BJ had. See, that's what oh, I got. Oh, no, I, I got that. Little, I got that. Really, A is more than B? Oh, it's still that's what I thought. That's, that's what I got for B, but it could have been. Yeah, well, I, I got that same thing. So. Is that right then? I can't. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't do it. I just gave it. Yeah. Oh, there there you go. Go. Do it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, let's do it. The only thing we <laughs> need to do is part of some moment. We'll do it about A. Takes it out of the equation. So we have F1 at uh, 1.5 meters, right? One, or 1.5 meters. So, uh, I think the original way that is right. You can do it about the left end. That is where we have it measured, but it doesn't eliminate any unknown from the equation, which is a greater benefit, probably. Well, then these need to be switched. So, F2 is two kilonewtons and it's at 3.25 meters. Is that right? And then B is at four meters. So those two are equal to B at four meters. kilonewtons at 1.5, yep, 2 kilonewtons at 3.25, and B at the end, which is 4 meters from A. So B comes out to be? 5.4. Okay. How does that make sense though? Yeah, because there's an extra on the well, side of A. Yeah, there, B is all the way at the end. So it's this, everything this little bit is, is okay. as it pulls down on this side is actually going to lift up a little bit on that and lighten that load some. So intuition doesn't always work. Okay. Good enough with that one? Because now we're going on to new stuff. 
far as we're concerned, this is old stuff, except we're going to need this. We're going to need it right away, but we'll need it quickly. All right, so let's step back to a little bit simpler problem just to introduce our next part. A little bit simpler just in that uh, we'll do it without a distributed load to start. Just so we can get this stuff down, then we'll throw in distributed load. So we have a, a beam here and we have three loads on it. One right in the middle, one in the middle of that, and then one in the middle of that. So two kips, six kips, four kips, a dollar. All for damn it. You were about ready to jump up and start doing a cheer, weren't you? I was, I was sorry. Yep, but I did it for you. <laughs> and we want to find the uh, two reactions. So it's just simply supported as usual. Actually, we don't want to find those because we've done this stuff. So I'll just give you those. Don't say I didn't ever give you anything. Because we don't need to do that again. All right, so that's our setup. Take a split second to get it down. Because there's nothing there we couldn't have done back in the third week. Ready? Ready. Okay. So let's look at what are the forces internal in the beam. All these forces external to the beam are serving to try to rip it apart. So there are all those forces are in the beam somewhere. We need to pick, oh, well, this is what we'll do next term. This is what we'll do next term, what he won't do next term. What we'll do next term is we'll pick a beam size, cross-section, even material such that it can actually withstand those. We've never looked at the fact that there's a possibility the beam itself could fail because we haven't looked at the forces in the beam itself. So we're going to do that now. Let's uh, just for help label some of the points. Well, let me change this to an E just so it keeps all the letters in order because we're going to break it into a bunch of sections. And so we can do this yeah, in order as we go. Alright, so to find out what the forces are in the beam, then let's just break it apart. Uh, between A and B. Let's just write it that way. I don't know if I like that. Let's do A to B. Let's do that. Everybody okay with that one? Oh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I will do that. Okay, so we have, we have this little bit of beam and we'll go part way down, not quite down to B. Because we want to see what forces we have inside the beam. So we imagine putting a cut through it. We've still got this reaction over here of 5.5 kips. But we haven't gone far enough down yet to pick up this two kip load. Now, it doesn't mean we're ignoring that as part of it, because remember that two kips contributed to this being 5.5. So it's, it's still a, a part of it, it's just we have to look at some other... We're looking internally to the beam now to see what the material uh, is undergoing before we can start the next term. 
actually taking care of that. Clearly, this piece is not in equilibrium. So there must be internal forces here. Uh, if we have a force up, we must have some force down there at that exposed surface that's actually coming from its physical attachment with the rest of the beam. It's the molecular uh, bonds and strength of, of the material itself. We're going to call that V for shear. That's how you, that's how you spell shear somewhere, I guess, with a V. Uh, obviously, I, we don't even have to belabor that point because that's got to be 5.5 kips itself to balance the 5.5 um, kip reaction going up there. Is it in equilibrium now? No, not at all. Yeah, we have, we, what we have now is a couple and we have to uh, oppose that with some moment. We have a couple, in this case it happens to be counterclockwise, so we must have some internal moment in the material. So not only is the, the beam, uh, the, the force is trying to shear the beam apart, shear failure looks something like that. That would be uh, if it fails due to that cross force of shear. But there must be some bending going on in a two, and we see that because we would expect this beam to bow down something like that. That's the sign of internal moment. The fact that there's that bending going on and we need a material that can resist that. At least that's what we're going to do in the spring. So we need some moment there that can oppose that uh, internal moment opposed, uh, that's coming from the forces itself. How big is that? You can do that on the fly too, I hope. How big is this couple that this needs to oppose? You ever figure out the, the magnitude of a couple? That's 5.5. Not quite. Right. 5.5 times the distance between these. So I made my little cut somewhere at X. In fact, the size of the moment depends upon where I made my little cut. But that's also somewhat intuitive because the greater the moment, the greater the bending in the beam. And here at the end, there's really not very much bending going on. It just is connected to the thing there. As we go down farther, it starts to bend more and more. So that, that makes some good sense too, I hope. So this is 5.5x kip. Oh, I didn't put a distance between those. Sorry, four feet between each one. So this is actually then from zero to four feet that we're doing this uh, A to B business. And this will be kip splits. So we know now how big the moment must be internal into the beam, at least for this section A to B, because nothing really changes there except X, and we've taken account of that anyway. So we know how big the moment is. It's zero at this end, goes all the way up to, what is that, 22 kips? Uh, 22 kip feet, and so we can handle it. All right, not not too big a struggle. Let's uh, let's now do from B to C. B to C, which is four feet to eight feet, and now we have 
a little bit of beam. We go out far enough. We go past the two kip load, but not quite out to the six kip load. And see what we've got. Let's see, that reaction is still there. That's 5.5. We have a load there of two kips. That's four feet away. And we're making some cut again at some place. X. And that X can be anywhere in between B and C. The reason is because nothing really changes in there. No new load has come into it. Nothing's changed with the beam. Um, there's no difference between a little bit past B and a little bit shy of C in, in terms of what we're going to find here because, uh, as you might suspect, that X is going to come into this again. Yep. This, where you've got that 5.5, where on, on your whole beam is that? Yeah, that's that's the zero reaction zero. over here at A. So would that be 0 to 8? You're, you're, you're going to C, not A to C. No, uh, we've already done A to B. Now we're doing B to C. That's where my cut is, is B to C. Oh, you're just drawing, okay, you're B just drawing to C. A on that. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm just, I still got to look at the whole beam because I don't want two cuts in here. I don't want to cut on this side and a cut on that side. I want to go from what I know out to what I don't know, so I only have one unknown in the problem. If I put two cuts, I don't know what the shear and the moment are at either one of those. I have to put it, I have to put it in. So what's the, the Z? What's Z? That's not Z, that's two. Oh. That's the slow two kips. Oh. Oh. Z. Man, there's something about that side of the room. I mean, that, that looks like this. <laughs> yeah. In fact, if I were you, because I'd move my chair to here. <laughs> just say, I'm not dealing with those people at all. They're just too darn nasty. All right. Is that in equilibrium? Heck, it can't be. We got some load up. We don't have enough load now. We've got some more shear here. Is it the same as the, it was in the other section? No, it's, it, it's clearly clearly different because we have 5.5 up, we got two down, we need another 3.5 down, is that right? Is it in equilibrium now? Uh, it might be, but we darn well better check because there could still be, we'd expect there still be some bending here because there's still going to be some curve in the beam and that's what we're looking for. I mean, that, that's what you imagine uh, the kind of thing that moment does is it causes beams to curve like that. How big is that moment? Well, it must oppose this, which is 5.5x away. And it's in the same direction as this one. So if they were on the same side, that would bring it over to this side. It'd have a minus sign then. And that's 2 times x minus 4. Now is that that's okay? That's still x going from 0? Because x could be all the way down here. x could, could be 0 all the way up to uh, all the way up to 8 if we went to the next next piece. And so yeah, that's that uh, that should do it. x equals 4 that's zero, and we're back at what we were before. When x equals four, we have the same values we had when we when we just left off. So that makes sense. We can clean this up a little bit. Uh, five 
3.5x plus 4. Uh, sorry, plus 8. That higher mathematics, man, just confuses me. And that's for uh, any place in this second section, B to C. Because before that, we already have the moment. So now we can start uh, wondering, gee, is there, is there a place where the moment's the maximum? And that's the place we'd have to worry about. Maybe when we go to build this beam, we don't worry so much about it on the ends where it's not undergoing too much moment, internal moment or shear, and beef it up a little bit in the center. We might be able to make a lighter beam that way. Might be able to make uh, uh, a cheaper beam. Okay, so we'll do the next section. This is what? X equals 8 to 12. C to D. Okay, so we start at A. We got far enough, we're going to get the 2 kip load, we're going to get the 6 kip load, and then we make another cut. So the loads don't change, it just changes whether or not they're in the picture. Somewhere in between those uh, the six and the four kip load. So you do that one. shear along there? That looks like it going in the other direction. Yeah, we've got 5.5 going up, 8 going down. So we need, what, 2.5 going up? See, now we need to know that. Now we know it's going to, if it, there's shear failure, it'd be in the other direction. So maybe that's part of our design process now as we go through this. What, is, what does that mean as far as this, because there's another piece attached to it? Does that mean that this piece would want to go that way? Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, well, actually, this piece wants to go down, that piece wants to go up, and it's trying to drag this up. Right, okay, so that's what that's holding up on that. Right? Yeah. Okay. So if this failed, it would fail like that. If it failed in shear. But in the other two locations, it would, fail, it would be the other way. Yeah. Right? That's actually the rest of the beam pulling up on that as it's, as the loads are trying to make it go down. Any moment in there? Sure suspect so. Not sure which direction, so we've got to guess something. I will guess the same direction we've been guessing. Again, the moment's going to be a function of x. Just be 
because uh, the farther down the beam we go, the farther apart that shear is to everything else, so the moments are all going to change. Got something? No, I'm just thinking in each one of those refers to the, the moment, the, the part of the moment that's uh, multiplied times x, it's the same as the shear. Huh. Just trying to figure out how to get the other part. It's not as easy because, uh, um, I'll just, it's not. Maybe he doesn't see it. I can't always see it. Let's see. So it's got to oppose the 5.5. And the other two are in the same direction as it is. So they'll be on the opposite side as negatives. Negative 2 kips times x minus 4 again. And then minus 6 kips. And that's uh, x minus 8. Right? And then you can clean that up a little bit. That's going to be the internal moment to the beam there. So what's that claim up to? 3.5x minus 6x is the 2.5x, right? Just like Alan said, uh, equal to the shear there. Negative 2.5, does that make a difference? Yeah. It's negative 2.5? Yeah. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it makes a difference because if it's a negative value, it tells us we got this the wrong direction. Um, and then what's all the other stuff? Uh, plus 56. 8 plus 48 plus 54. Is that right? No, 56. Is that right? 56 now? Okay, that's what, that's what I guess. Okay. Little trick. So, even though that's negative, would the mo like our drawing of the moment be in the right direction? Because no matter what value of x you put up in yeah. the it would still be positive. Yeah, but we need the negatives at all time to know, because it could switch. Uh, we wouldn't expect it to here. If you're already figuring out the moment in that direction gives us a beam that curves like that, but we could come up with loads, maybe with uh, um, some other kind of support where the curvature would go from positive to negative like that. So we're going to need to know where that switch is. We don't have that in this beam, but those are the pieces we got to start putting together is all those little bits. Uh, let's double check it. Let's see. Uh, from here at the at the eight foot mark, what was the moment? When when x equals eight feet, the moment is three point five times eight plus eight. Thirty-six. So right here, coming into this, the moment's thirty-six. What's the moment in this equation just as we leave the eight feet? So put eight feet in again. Let's see if the moment's continuous, the function is continuous. What's 36 there? And it's 36 again. So the moment, we don't have a jump in the moment going from this section to this section. Which makes sense, if you think about it, because we don't have any applied moments. We just have forces being applied. So now D to E which is 12 feet to the last of the beam, the 16 feet. We've got the 5.5 there still. We've got 2 there, 
six there, four there, and we're at some spot X. So we're going to have some shear. Obviously, 12 down, 5.5 up, so 6.5 in shear. And that's constant all the way through that section. There's nothing that uh, nothing that changes it. And it looks like we're gonna have some moment too. Maybe not. I guess it could come out to be zero. But I don't think we'd expect that because when the moment's zero internally, there's no bending in the beam. The beam is straight. And we'd certainly expect, just our intuition tells us this beam's going to curve everywhere. So, we just need to figure out what that last little piece of the moment is. negative 6.5x plus 104. The group agrees. I agree too. Um, so is that uh, in this section? So uh, maybe put in uh, 14 feet. Is that positive or negative? Actually, so put in the 12, see if we left off where we left off with the other one when we hit the 4. Okay. All right, so we're going we're gonna to take this one and continue it then on uh, Wednesday. So... All we need is that picture. We've got all the pieces. Just have them handy so that uh, we can bring them up and talk. <laughs>